Money is something that is generally accepted as a medium of exchange and is a measure of value. With this, we can trade goods and services. However, money and currency did not just pop out of the blue and became our medium of exchange. Before currency ever existed in the Philippines, we have our own system of exchange called the barter system. In this system, Anything of value of products or services can be exchanged by consenting parties who believe the transactions be beneficial to each other. The inconvenience of this system led to the use of objects as a medium of exchange, such as gold, which was plentiful in many parts of the islands. These goals were then transformed to become pilonsitos and gold barter rings, which are small bit like gold beads and were considered by the local numismatists as the earliest coins of the ancient Filipinos. For 300 years of Spanish rule in the Philippines, there are numerous issues of money. The earliest coins brought in by the galleons from Mexico and other Spanish colonies were the cobs or the macuquinas, locally called hilis calamay. It was used as their medium of exchange from 1565 to 1815. These are irregularly shaped coins hammered in Spain and Spanish America. Together with these cobs were the Spanish Dos Mundos, which was also known as the Mexican Pillar Dollar, or the Columnarias, which circulated extensively not only in the Philippines but over the world from 1732 to 1772. It is considered as one of the most beautiful coin designs ever produced. As time goes by, these fractional coins have come into shortage, and this gave way to the production of the first crude copper or bronze coins locally produced in the Philippines, the barillas. It was also the origin of our Filipino term, barilla, which refers to small change or value. In the early part of the 19th century, most of the Spanish colonies in Central and South America revolted and declared independence from Spain. They issued Latin America silver coins bearing revolutionary slogans and symbols which reached the Philippines. The Spanish government officials and the islands were fearful that the markings would incite Filipinos to rebellion. Thus, they removed the inscriptions by counter-stamping the coins with the word F7 or Y the second. Silver coins with the profile of young Alfonso XIII were the last coins minted in Spain. As kings of Spain changes over time, the design of coinage here in the Philippines also changes. This is the Alfonso series. The Alfonsos are the Spanish Philippine pesos remain in circulation and were legal tender in the islands until 1904. As conflict between the Spaniards and the Filipino worsens, the Spanish forces were aware that their forces weakened and they cannot win if the battle continues. In December 14, 1897, the Pact of Biakno Bato created a truce between Spanish colonial governor general Fernando Primo de Rivera and Emilio Aguinaldo, whom at that moment were self-proclaimed as El General and believe in himself that he is the new president of the new government after the KKK has been abolished. The Spanish offered Aguinaldo and his fellow revolutionaries will be given amnesty and monetary indemnity by the Spanish government if they will go for a voluntary exile in Hong Kong. On the latter period of the Spanish colonization, the Peso Fuerte, the first paper money circulated in the Philippines, issued by El Banco Español Filipino de Isabel II, co-circulated with other Spanish silver and gold coins. The banknotes were convertible to either silver pesos or gold coins at the bank's discretion. In the Malolos Constitution of 1898, Emilio Aguinaldo was vested with the authority to produce currencies. Two centavo copper coins were released, as well as the revolutionary banknotes were printed. Hand signed by Pedro Paterno, Mariano Limhap, and Telesforo Chuidan. These notes were later withdrawn from circulation and declared as illegal currency when Americans came. Emilio Aguinaldo were later told by the Americans to go back to the Philippines and declare independence from Spain in 1898. Since then, the government began to issue and use our very first currency in the form of coins and papers. 
Modern banking, currency, and credit systems were instituted making the Philippines one of the most prosperous countries in East Asia. Monetary system was based on gold and pegged the Philippine peso to the American dollar. This is the beginning of the American period. Although the United States' determination to colonize the Philippines was fraught with resistance and difficulties that resulted in the Philippine-American War, the United States was successful in establishing an American government within the islands, and therefore, a currency exchange. The U.S. Congress approved the Coinage Act for the Philippines in 1903. The coins issued under the system bore the designs of Filipino engraver and artist Melesha Figueroa. This is a monetary system based on the gold standard providing for a Philippine peso pegged to the U.S. dollar at 2 is to 1. The series of coins that resulted from this decision is often referred to as Conant coins after Charles Conant, an American monetary expert. And our almighty one peso note was printed, Republica Filipina Papel Moneda de Un Peso. The other paper is the five peso note, which bore cinco pesos in its print. Copper-based coins of lower denomination were also in circulation. Since 1852, the Banco Español Filipino de Isabel had in circulation banknotes until 1904, where silver certificates has been issued in different denominations, and were soon replaced by treasury certificates issued between 1918 and 1941. In 1912, the bank changed its name to the Bank of the Philippine Islands, or BPI, and continued issuing notes until year 1933 together with the Philippine National Bank, which issued notes in 1916 and released emergency notes in 1917. This all remained in circulation until year 1947. The banks that issued Philippine paper money or currency were Banco Español Filipino, Bank of the Philippine Islands, Philippine Islands Philippine National Bank The peace of the American occupation here in the Philippines was disturbed when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. This was the start of World War II here in the Philippines. Japanese Prime Minister Matsuoka Yosuke announced the idea of the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere, a group of Asian nations led by the Japanese and free of Western powers. They believed to Asia for Asians. As Japan occupied various Asian countries, they set up governments with local leaders who proclaimed independence from the Western powers. One of the main ways to accomplish this was to have a unified currency, one that was not tied to Western currencies. In Japanese occupation, there were anti-Japanese social groups, and one of these is the Hukbalahap, Hukbong Bayan Laban sa Mga Hapon. This group contains small groups which were called guerrillas. These guerrillas have issued notes varying on their respective location. The Japanese government in the Philippines outlawed possession of guerrilla currency and declared a monopoly on the issuance of money, so that anyone found to possess guerrilla notes could be arrested. These guerrilla groups existed in a number of areas in the Philippines such as Aklan, Romblon, Apayao, Bohol, Cebu, and Leyte. These are some of the guerrilla notes in some areas in the Philippines. Aklan, Romblon, Apayao, Bohol, Cebu, And later. 
the Japanese government issued special currency notes, the Japanese invasion money to replace local currency of their colonies, which were called Mickey Mouse money by some Filipinos. Many survivors of the war tell stories of going to the market laden with suitcases or bayong overflowing with the Japanese issued bills. According to one witness, 75 Mickey Mouse pesos or about 35 US dollars at that time could only buy one chicken egg. In 1944, a box of matches cost more than 100 Mickey Mouse pesos. The JAM notes are usually worth 10 to 25 cents each, unless they are in perfect condition. Then, 50 cents to a dollar. If they are the replacement type, they could be worth a couple of dollars to even five dollars. Those bills were often used by the American psychological warfare personnel as propaganda leaflets. The Japanese occupation banknotes were overprinted with the words, The co-prosperity sphere, what is it worth? In an attempt to discredit the Greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere and drop from Allied aircraft over the occupied territories. The U.S. later on produced the Victory Note series and was printed in 1944 to be used upon the return of MacArthur. When he came ashore in Leyte on October 20, 1944, he was purportedly carrying some of this in his pocket. They brought many crates full of these notes with them during the landing. Victory notes were printed at the U.S. Bureau of Engraving and Printing the last Philippine currency printed by the U.S. Replacement notes are indicated by a star prefix to the serial number. There are also signature combinations which are harder to find. The signature combinations are as follows. S. Osmeña and J. Hernandez, S. Osmeña and M. Guevara, M. Rojas and M. Guevara. From then on, the new series of currency in the Bagong Lipunan were issued and were continuously changing until today. This only shows that as we move towards new generation, our currency also changes based on what we need and is affected on what happens in the world. We can truly say that even in this what we call money, the medium of exchange, there will always be a history that lies beyond it. And this is the history of currency and banking in the Philippines.